Welcome to Unit 2 of the Math 245 course. We pick up where we left off with Unit 1. Uh, as with Unit 1, you want to start at the top with the purpose statement and read through it, and then continue to go down, either reading or completing each thing as directed. So we're going to read through the purpose statement, if you haven't already. Uh, then we have something new to Unit 2, and that is a review of the previous unit. So there was no previous unit in Unit 1, so there was no review. Um, but you actually have to complete this before uh, completing the practice for Unit 2. So if you're getting an error message of that, uh, that might be the problem. Uh, and you have to get a reasonable score on it. Uh, these are problems that you should understand covering material from Unit 1, so you can refer back to the Unit 1 resources if need be. And uh, they're set up just like the practice problems. The learning objectives then start off what we're going to do with this second unit. Um, you know, we saw how to not only uh, analyze uh, a study or an experiment, um, but we also saw how to take data sets and to start to organize them. Uh, we actually set up uh, frequency distributions right at the end of unit one. So um, continuing from that, we're going to take these frequency tables and then convert them into histograms and box plots, sort of graphical versions of that, uh, as well as get summary statistics from these data sets. So finding things like the mean that you may be familiar with, uh, but also finding things like the interquartile range or percentile that you may not be familiar with. Um, so there's a lot of different measures we want to get from a data set, and uh, we'll be looking at each of those. We've got another great set of uh, notes here with the vocabulary notation and formula, starting off showing a uh, histogram and its corresponding, sorry, a frequency distribution and its corresponding histogram. Um, so this, this graph, which we call the histogram, goes with this frequency table. Give you a basic idea of how that works. Uh, right, The frequencies are the height of the bars and the values are the horizontal labels. So there's a video showing how to, how to do that in Excel. Uh, and then with each of these measures, we have the definition and some explanation on it, the notation, and the Excel formula. So for instance, with the mean, uh, there's a uh, sort of brief description of it. Uh, then we have the notation for the sample mean. We use X with a little bar on top, X bar. And for the population, we use the Greek letter mu. It looks kind of like a U with an extra line at the beginning. Uh, and then the formula in Excel is just equals average. Uh, so we've got that as sort of a, a nice little a list of all the different formulas we need for each of these measures. Um, then we have other things like the five number summary and the interquartile range, which you determine from these values above. Uh, we have our other graph. Uh, in addition to the history, we want to look at the box plot. Uh, the box plot does make use of quartiles in the five number summary, so that's why it has to be covered first. Uh, and then we get into these things like outliers and skewed data. So we have uh, special definitions for those. Make sure to, to read and understand those. All right. Uh, then you have the actual Unit 2 reading. Uh, so this should open up into the uh, online version of the book. Uh, but you can also just read all of Chapter 2 from your print or digital copy. This is taking a little while to load. Okay, so we had a, a little bit of a problem with that link, but it is now fixed. So again, go to the link here for the read the uh, digital ebook. Uh, let me know if the links aren't working as usual. But uh, this should take you to chapter two, um, and you can always open up the contents and kind of skip around. We do want to cover two one through two eight in this uh, in this unit, so you can read through that way. Again, chapter two. Uh, should be the same in the print or uh, digital PDF download that you can get to from the uh, or course information folder. Uh, so we have some videos to go along with that. So there's the Chapter 2 video by the authors giving an overview of Chapter 2 concepts. Uh, and then the main processes that I want us to be able to accomplish, I've made videos 
uh, for how to find the frequency histogram, which is, right, that's the, the bar graph of the frequency distribution. The box plot, which uses an online generator instead of Excel. Um, you can do a box plot in Excel, I just don't find it to be that great, but as long as it is accurate, I will accept it. And then five number summary done with Excel there. So I've got some, some good videos there. Um, the result of the histogram video is shown here as a link, so you can pull up that finished spreadsheet uh, if you want a copy of that. Um, if you have issues with printing the box plot, you can look at these directions here, that might help. Um, and then just some other notes I put in about uh, to how to understand things being skewed to the left or right or symmetric uh, in that document there, in that model. Uh, as always, there is a question and answer forum, and that is linked to the practice problems. So you can ask a question about those. Uh, and again, with practice unit two, you do have to satisfactorily complete the review of unit one. A um, little shorter than the practice for unit one. So much, much reasonable size uh, set of questions there. Uh, critical thinking is not too bad either. We only got six questions uh, as usual, right? You've got the minimum number of sentences there and you wanna make sure you use complete sentences and you wanna make sure that it's always in your own words or that you properly quote and cite. And after you post, don't forget to read uh, the other posts and make any corrections if you had anything wrong. Uh, you do that by replying to your own posts uh, and you do that with the same deadline. So the deadline for the replies and the corrections is the same as the uh, regular deadline. So, um, And check the calendar for those deadlines. Uh, what is different about this critical thinking is that we have a peer assessment. So we didn't do this last week. Um, while you technically are always welcome to do this, um, unless somebody says to stop doing it because they don't want that feedback. Uh, here you actually get an extra credit point for doing it. So um, you make a reply to someone else's post and you give them positive assessment feedback. Uh, we saw that with the um, first unit had a uh, self-assessment and you were saying something strong about the performance at the beginning. All right, which is always a good way to start off. Providing a way that somebody can improve. Right? You're not saying what's wrong, you're saying how it could improve. And then saying an insight, something you learned from reading their post. So you put that in, um, the SII format, S for strength, I for improvement, I for insight, uh, as a reply to someone else, and you uh, can earn an extra credit point for the critical thinking. Finally, we have our project unit two. Uh, we'll be taking the results of the Unit 1 project and adding to it. So you do want to make sure that you check the gradebook for feedback on that Unit 1 project and you make any changes. It might turn out that you didn't have an acceptable data set or did something um, significant. Uh, we would need to fix that first, right? And, you know, with these projects, you can uh, submit a redo within one week of the original deadline. So um, you should be checking after the deadline, right after the deadline when I grade these, check for feedback and uh, make any needed changes to try to earn back more credit on that assignment. Uh, I feel like this one is pretty straightforward, so I don't have a video for it because you're doing a lot of the basic things, finding the five number summary and the box plot, and, and these things are all covered with the videos in the Unit 2 video section. So I'm not asking you to do anything out of the ordinary, it's just a really large data set. So it might present some challenges there, um, but you should be able to, to do that. Uh, that's about it for Unit 2. Um, unit 3 is a little longer, so if you can take advantage of this being a little shorter and get a head start on Unit 3, that'd be good. Um, and as usual, uh, you can always send me a message if there's ever a problem, or you can uh, send me an email. All right, I will uh, see you in the next orientation video for Unit 3.